the First Lady of Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Haisha Buari. Uh, please, Ambassador, can you just come to the high, high table, please? And uh, we also like to welcome the last two speakers uh, to join us in the high table, Dr. Mrs. Tuma Adama Dento Kamara. Please come to the high table, as well as uh, Her Excellency, Dr. Mrs. Eunice Otom Samuel. Please join us in the high table. Comments will be listening to them talk to us. We'll be asking them some questions. I will be joining them. That's very high. Sitting uh, beside these wonderful women is an experience for me. But I would like, before I join them, I would like to just share, at least, please, I want to beg for just two minutes to tell you how I became or how I got to where I am today. Can I have it, please? Okay, thank you so much. You know, before the, after the 2015 election, we looked at most of the televisions in Nigeria. And the observation then was that all the station's political discussion were handled by men. If you tune to all the stations in Nigeria, and even those on international belts, they were all handled by men. And you know what it means. The man is there to ask the woman question, and they are by us. They start asking questions that will not favor us. And so my management they took a decision to say we want to start up a political program, a strong one at that. Since they have theirs once in a week, twice in a week, what you see is either a woman is supporting hand in some of the programs. And the management picked me and said, you're quiet. I don't know if that is true. Maybe you can, you're cool-headed. So when I started, this fright, that's what starts, that's what comes up first. You are faced, you are in the gathering of men, and they are not just coming to you with their kindness and heart and hands open. No, because you are, not, you are an opponent. They want to pull you down, and there's this pull her down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I took a decision to say I will do it. First, first, second, it wasn't that good. And then my, the owner of my organization, uh, I want to appreciate him uh, here. Uh, Dr. Chief Raymond Dopesi told me, remove the woman in you, please. <laughs> face this man, look at them in the face. Take it out of you, Idoma. I want you to, first of all, I don't say you should kill your nature as a woman. Take it out and be a strong woman. And I got that welcome to the club. And I started asking them some critical questions. At the end of it, they will say, how can a woman be talking to me like that? <laughs> Most of them, if I call them, come join me, they'll say, no, she will disgrace me. So that's, that's, that's my short story. That's where I am today. And I'm, I'm proud to say, uh, let me just join them. Thank you so much. Ladies, um, like we said, we have uh, wonderful women with us here, and they will be, they will be, I'll be asking them some questions so they can tell us. Let me just introduce them again. Uh, with us is uh, Dr. Mrs. Tuma Dama Dento Kamara. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Children. But let me also welcome uh, Aisha, uh, Aisha Musa, the Nigerian ambassador. Thank you, and Our Excellency, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now let's start first of all. Let's get to get your experience from women that have held position. I'm going to start from uh, this part of the conversation. You'll be the last person to talk to me. Thank you so much. So let's uh, let me ask you, Our Excellency Eunice Samuel Otom, with a challenge that is that you're faced with in your state, and from the good message you just gave us, it is assumed that women find it difficult climbing up to the ladder. So what, do you, what have you done and what do you think others can learn from what you have done in your state uh, to, to successfully break the chain? Thank you. Um, the challenge we are facing in the federal state, particularly on insecurity, is mostly on the Headers, uh, farmers crisis, which, as I mentioned earlier, has dislodged most of uh, the people, some uh, people from their communities, 
to now live in the camps. And for those that have been displaced, we have more of the women and children who are at the camps. And this has been going on for a number of years now. The women, apart from being displaced from their indigenous homes to be in places that are not comfortable, not convenient for them to stay, even at the camps, they face a lot of challenges, biases, because they are women. Now, even when it comes to distribution of food items, the women are not involved in the process. And even when the distributions are made, some of the men try to use it as a bait, you know, to have uh, sexual uh, escapades with them. And that, of course, when it's not with the other person's uh, concession or acceptance, it is as good as rape. And of course, I've talked about the young girls that go into marriage because that may just be their option, you know, to move on in life due to a lack of uh, a livelihood. And what we have done is to create awareness in the camps. And this has been done through partly the office of the wife of the governor of the state, my humble self here, with a coalition of women uh, interest groups and of course civil society organizations to sensitize the women and the girls on their rights. And of course, we've been trying to ensure that for those that try to use the distribution of food items as a bait or to intimidate the girls and the women at the various camps are also brought to book. Uh, generally, what we have been doing is to continually sensitize our women and girls for them to know their rights and to report at any time that they are being molested or harassed in whatever way or whatever form. And uh, the state government through the Ministry of Women Affairs has also been doing a lot to promote the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 so that people are aware that there are laws or there are rules that must be followed in order to avert the crisis and violence that girls and women suffer. Although uh, there are issues concerning the implementation, and I was still want to say that uh, it's a little bit like uh, the UNSCR 1325 is still unpopular in our environment. In as much as the women have tried to be part of this um, movement 
and to ensure that other women are aware of their rights and what they need to do in certain situations, uh, the implementation level is not too encouraging. And so I think uh, there is every need to continue to create awareness. And of course, uh, I have also tried through the office of the First Lady of the State and through my foundation, the Unispring of Life Foundation, to partner with other organizations of like minds to make a case for women to be part of the decision-making process, the, even from the planning, the decision-making, and the implementation stage. And we are getting there little by little. Uh, and I hope that uh, with time, our women will get to be more appreciated in the role of playing, um, playing to be a social and uh, to be pro positive as agents to uh, help to sustain peace and development in our communities. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, quickly get um, Dr. Kamara. Yes, you are from not just uh, uh, in the political circle, you're also from the civil service. And uh, this time around, let's look at how young women in Africa can take a look at your step and also get to the position, especially in uh, sustainable developments that we have today. Because if you take a look at what happened in the civil service, you see that there are bureaucracy that don't allow women to grow more than what they are. So how can they get to that position? Thank you very much, madam. And thank you all, that's the president and my co-panelists um, as well. Um, first of all, I think education is the foundation, is the key. But as I said earlier, you can do the education, but what next? Um, say, for example, where I am at the National Revenue Authority, under my leadership, we introduced what's called the Female Mentorship Program. Now, what we do is encourage like the females to come up. So we have mentors from the start, from the lower level, right up to the senior management level. So we tend to identify them by do, having a mentorship program with them. It's not just picking them out. So you actually mentor them and you encourage them for them to grow in society. Not just at the, at the National Revenue Authority level, but going, moving upward as well if you so wish to do that, so we actually encourage them. And um, what we do, we also have programs that we organize, I'm now talking about nationwide, working as well with the Office of the First Lady, just to make sure that we encourage these girls to come up. And um, also the legal sector is another key part, because some of these women need to be protected in the workplace and wherever they find themselves. So we, um, about two or three years ago, I think rape was something, if you're found wanting for rape, it was um, a seven years imprisonment or thereabout. But under this leadership, rape is now a lifetime imprisonment. So this is where we start and we need to make sure that we see it working. And it's actually working. In Sierra Leone, when you go near a girl or a lady, you hear people saying, than at the government in Peking in our local dialect. <laughs> so the men are always saying, oh, be careful. That's the government's child, especially the girls and the ladies, <laughs> because it's working. It's working in the courts. And we've seen lots of men going behind bars, and that has been a deterrent so far. So I would say starting 2022, we haven't seen much of it because they're seeing that it's working. It's not just a law on the bookshelf gathering dust, but it's actually working. And we also have the female lawyers group in Sierra Leone called Lawyers. It's just for female lawyers. And that's what we do. It's a pro bono one. So we do to defend these girls and women as well, to make sure that we enforce these laws and right, we make it happen. All right, thank you. Sorry, I need to stand up because I'm seated here. Mm 
has a thank you. You see, the, the Nigerian example is quite, because uh, I'm from, I'm a Nigerian, it's not too encouraging because the representation of women in politics is quite low, not even quite low, but quite low. Before now, we had about 13%, I don't think we have about 10% of it, and that's a challenge. So how do we break this challenge so that people can also learn from women? Well, the best way to break this challenge, in my own opinion, you know, because she hasn't given me anything written, but I will tell you my own opinion. The fault is largely from the women, you understand, ourselves. We need to come together and decide who should, you know, like now, you know, they're paying for, what do you call it, nomination. You hear one group paying for this man, one group paying, how many group has paid for any woman? We need to unite and decide what we want and then put the women forward. I think this is what Rwanda did, you understand. We need to get united and work together, the women. Educate one another and then be our, each other's keepers, you understand. Because we are our worst enemies, the women, if you look at the whole situation happening around in Nigeria, you understand. So bring ourselves together, work together, decide together, two associations or whatever. If we know this person can represent us, then they can. let's bring her forward. Let us all support her. If we need to put money together to sponsor her, let's do it. You understand? That is the way to go forward. That is what I think. The women coming together. Okay, let's go back to Sorry, Your Excellency, I'll be, I'll be calling you Ben Mistake here. This is Kigali. Uh, let's go back to Ben Mistake. Yes, the, the role of women as agents of peace. You've been able to tell us what uh, the state government is doing uh, to ensure that women are adequately supported, especially those uh, that are in the position they are today, let's be honest, not the, uh, from the fault of theirs, but because of insecurity and how bandits sat this event from their homes. Now, how can these women that are at least deprived, women that are challenged, how can they be agents of change? Especially when, when becoming agents of peace and sustainable development, change to that. Well, the good thing is that uh, women already play that role of finding peace in the family and in their various uh, communities with or without crisis around them. And um, the women that have found themselves at the camps have been encouraged by various uh, organizations, the government itself, uh, civil society organizations have been very vibrant in always supporting them to be able to continue with life despite the situation they found themselves in. And so from time to time, People support them through empowerment for them to be able to have something to do and fall back on so they are not completely uh, depressed. And so um, why they are empowered to have uh, a source of livelihood at the camps they are also sensitized and empowered with the knowledge that will help them to build back their dignity and to also continue to play their roles as uh, agents for peace.
what would you do in your own capacity to bring up these ones that have the ability to do the ones that want to go to school and be educated? For education is hard. So how, what, what would you tell the government of the state to say, yes, now that there is an election coming, let us be the one that empowers for women, not just giving them the rights or giving them food, but how do we educate the student from lawyers, doctors, Are you referring to the women in the camps or women generally? Oh, I understand. Generally. So, what do you think as, as a support to a governor, other women in their own states and their own small places can do to also support women that are less privileged? Well, the first thing and the most significant one is to encourage women to be in politics. That is where decisions that concern everybody and our communities are made. And when we are carried along, we have the power to change our story, we have the power to change our situation. And we also have the power to support other women to climb up the ladder. So that is one key area that I have been advocating for in the States. And I really appreciate the women in Benue State who have given me full support. We partner together to ensure that we are ahead. And uh, for those little efforts we've made so far, we have also recorded some changes. Uh, it is during the administration of uh, my dear husband, His Excellency, in the first tenure that the state for the first time recorded eight women as the chairman of executive councils uh, in the local government areas. And even at the moment, we have nine women as chairman out of the 23 local governments of uh, the state. And of course, I have also been supporting women uh, through mentorship programs so they understand their role. Most times, our women go into politics unprepared. They do not, sometimes they do not even understand why they are there in the first place. Some are there because I need to build a house at the end of my tenure, or I need to look glamorous, or so. But when you know that politics is a means that helps to articulate and determine issues that matter to everyone, you will have your goal even before you step in. So we've had various uh, mentorship programs for the women and even the girl child for them to know their position in society and to prepare for it. Because when you prepare yourself, opportunity will be very close to meet you in your readiness and to usher you into greater heights. All right, thank you so much. Uh, when talking about uh, mentorship, I will, I will have to go. After this round of questions, we need to give uh, microphones to uh, the audience so that they can ask one or two questions uh, for them to answer. So, uh, Dr. Kamala, you see, she has, she spoke about the mentorship. And the uh, ambassadors who talked about women being involved in politics, they should come out. You know, there's this fear in Africa, because probably because of our religion and also our culture. And when the woman wants you. to come out, I, I, I had a lady who told me, who gave me her experience, when she wanted to run as a member of the parliament no, for the northern state of Nigeria. Uh, and she said they came on her, even yeah, women I mean, came on her to tell her, you're not afraid, you're competing with a man. How can you do that? That's disrespectful. Up to the extent of going to burn down a business place because she came out to say, yes, I want to represent my people. It happened in northern Nigeria. They went, destroyed her property, and 
they tagged her all sorts of names. So now, Dr. Kamara, it's important. I'm, I'm asking you this question because of the level that you have attained in your career. Education is key. Mentorship, leadership mentorship is key. But the most important one is that finance is very important when it comes to politics. You have to be strong. So what and how can we make these women who are eager to say, I want to be there, but how do I get there? How can we make them get there? Thank you very much again for that. Um, I still believe, first of all, it's being the role model that the women are in different positions across society. We need to be a role model. Integrity is very key in how we carry ourselves. And even though we've got the education, as you've rightly stated, but we need to make sure that we push. It's not an easy journey at all, but we need to push. And especially through the mentorship programs I spoke about, you can do it in different ways. It can be formal, it can be informal. I go to the market women in Sierra Leone. We have a, a, a famous street in Sierra Leone called Abacha, named after the former president in Nigeria. And it's called Abacha Street. And you go down to these women and tend to encourage them. By the way, not everyone will be educated. Not every woman will be educated. Education can come in a different form. Yes. You go down to them and tell them that you need to put your own children in school and you need to stand up as a woman and put some more effort in your business. Make that business grow. Whatever you sell, sometimes it's not really too much, but whatever they're selling, they make it grow and those profits are invested into their children to become people in society. And we've seen lots of that. Those are the women we go to because they are in their majority than the women up there. And the way you carry yourself is how they will listen to you. So we do that a lot and my husband as well does that a lot. He supports me in making sure that we get these women to the higher heights that we want to take them. Because, um, and by the way, what this government, uh, the government in Sierra Leone under this leadership had also done is to have free education as well for the primary and secondary school, especially for everyone, but especially girls. And what also they introduced in the tertiary education is to make sure that girls that want to go into science, politics, and those fields, they get free education as well, depending on their grades. You see what I said about the power of a woman in the house? The women can change, can turn things around. It's just to talk to the man. Now. There's a way, we have that power, God gave it to us. You lobby, it's positive. Lobby is not negative. You go to, if you feel that the man is standing there and he has the capacity to say, yes, I want to sponsor half the women that are here to do this and to do that. As a wife, you, you know the time to, do, to go to the man and then ask him, look at these women. Please, we should do that. Encourage those that are weak in our midst. And in encouraging them, I need to talk. Ambassador, you spoke about... Um, women coming out this time, nine of them. You see, one very good thing is that um, some of the political parties in Nigeria have decided to make um, the nomination form free for women and youth. So if they are making the nomination form free, away from the huge amount of money that they are, they are supposed to pay, that is the stepping stone. How do women support women? Because it seems that women are the enemies of women. Some of them do not even want to vote for you. They see you as, mm -mm. some of them are going after the envelope that those men give to them for politics. We should, how do we support women to pull through? Madam, for a woman to get to anywhere she wants to get, it's not easy. Even where I am today, it mm. wasn't easy to get there. I was discouraged from applying to join foreign affairs. So if you know what you want, you have to be determined, focus, you understand. And like you said, we are women. We know what to get, how to get what we want from the men. And we need to use that power to get to where we, we want to go to, you understand. It's not an easy thing for a woman to get to. But believe you me, in, even in Kano, as you're talking about the North, I know a lot of people that are in the Senate, are in everywhere, they have to find a way to get there. We need to find a way, you understand. You need to, like she said, the way you carry yourself, you make sure you do the job properly so that uh, you'll be a kind of role model for others, you know. Do what you're supposed to do. 
like what I am doing now, I am doing what I'm supposed to do. You can't point fingers at me, you know. Do what the right thing at the right time, you understand. And take your job seriously and then serve the people. That is what it is all about. The way you carry yourself, the way you do your things, you understand. And then the men, they are our men. We should know how to get what we want from them. You know, like you easily mentioned. So we need to know what we want and how to get what we want. And that is how we get to where we want. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, I think we need to get the mic to some persons who want to ask questions. You see, in getting what you want, if you're, if, you're not, if you're not a married woman, you don't need to sell yourself to this. No, woman. no, you don't. Need to. You don't need it. Mm. Like she said, and all of them are saying, courage is key. It's very important. If you're courageous as a woman, you, you surely break the ice. Yes, courage is key. And, um, and Excuse don't me, be madam. afraid. Excuse me. Go ahead. Please, in addition to what Madam said, you know, about empowering women, I want to share what I have learned here. You understand? I discovered that, you, like in Nigeria, you have women selling these foods on the road, huh? by the cars and where, wherever. What I discovered here, the president brought them together to form a cooperative. And we, yeah, cooperatives, you understand. And the idea, you know, he gave them a place, allocated a place for them, and they are there selling their fruits. It, that is a kind of empowerment. If state could do that, all our women doing different things, you understand, form them into a cooperative, give them a place to stay. Like in Abuja, every day they keep chasing people, selling fruits, and if you bring them together, you understand, into a cooperative, and then you give them a place to stay, that is a way of making them powerful. So that's what I wanted to share. Can we have a question? Okay, please do. Yes. Your name, please, and uh, yes, your country. Course. Okay, thank you very much. You give me the floor. I am Mrs. Malin Patricia from Cameroon. And uh, today, um, I am very happy to be present here as a speaker, first of all, and uh, as a participant. And uh, I am very delighted to, to hear these beautiful and, uh, 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 examples of women in Africa and as a young woman, it's um, making me to, and encourages me to uh, uh, be a young leader of tomorrow in my country. I am already doing so much in my country as a leader and a, as an um, uh, um, empower, empowerment lady in my country. So um, each and every lady in the panel has contributed a lot in what I taught already. They were all compliments of what each and everyone said. So I was very interested of what, of what uh, um, Mrs. Doctor, His Excellency said um, uh, according to her program of uh, the different IDPs in the Benue State and uh, it was a compliment to what uh, His Excellency Ambassador just said that women should encourage and accompany other young women to achieve their goals. I will take my example. In Cameroon, I had a scholarship to uh, integrate a diplomatic school abroad. So I went to my government to accompany me to pursue my goals. But my government refused to accompany me. Because first of all, I was a lady. Secondly, I was young. So they told me that, no, we are not sure that you are fit enough to go and represent us in Cameroon because yes, I was the only woman, only Cameroonian to be chosen in this school. So I went, I finished my study, was a PhD in diplomacy. And uh, afterward, I was in my class, I was the only lady in my class. And fortunately, I was the first in my class. So. It was very difficult for me because I was not, I did not have a background of diplomacy. I had a background because I'm a specialist in public health. And being a specialist in public health, going to diplomacy politics is very difficult. It's not the same thing. So I faced so many challenges with the men trying to uh, give some propositions, uh, uh, trying to, because I'm young, they think that I'm very naive. So it was not quite easy. So I fought with all my courage to be the first, not only the only woman to represent my country, but to be the only African woman to represent my country. So, taking into consideration that what Mrs. Excellency said, that women should engage in the politics, yes, it's true. 
But is that easy? It's not that easy. It's very difficult because, first of all, women are not encouraging other women to do so, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, the society where we are does not encourage women to do so. Thirdly, we don't have the means, we don't have the money to do so. And fourthly, we don't have the mentorship. If we have all these into our possession, yes, we can. Because yes, I'm an example of my community which went abroad, being the first of my class in diplomacy, and now my country is calling me back to be in the, in the Ministry of uh, 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 um, Exterior Affairs to represent my country out. See? So now I have the, 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 the priority to choose if I want to go with my country or not. But at first, they refused. So I just wanted to say that it's not that easy to get into politics why we want to, I want to, I only have 30 years old and I'm bold, I am a leader, I want to empower my, my colleague girls and ladies in Cameroon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, yes, um, uh, I, I, I think uh, Ambassador, I hear that you will want to take a leave uh, soon. Uh, probably we'll just let you, uh, let you just reply to her. It's not easy, like I said before, in this, in this part of the world, our culture, our community, don't permit it. That's just an example. So can you, can you just tell us, before you go, let us hear from you. Uh, you have an experience now as an ambassador in Rwanda. You have an experience and you have seen the two, you've seen the two faces. Can you tell us how they can pull through, how women can build courage, even in the face of darkness? Like I said, it wasn't easy for me, like she was saying, to get to where I am today. When I filled the form, the chairman, Federal Civil Service Commission, then told me, you are going to block people because I'm from the north. You are going to get married and then block other people. I said, whether I get married or not, it's my desire to be a, a foreign service officer. It wasn't easy, madam, but determination, knowing what I want, focus, you understand? I was just looking at him. I knew what I wanted, and I was determined. I filled the form, and I was, you know, the Federal Civil Service Commission employed me, and I am here today. And even when you join the ministry, it's not easy because it's a man's job, you understand. You have to work triple times more than the man. So you have to know what you want initially, and be determined to get there. And stay focused. That is what I think you should do. All right, can we say thank you so much, the Nigerian ambassador to Rwanda, uh, who is also representing uh, the first lady of Nigeria, Dr. Aisha Buhari, mm, thank uh, here. We want to say thank you for your contribution, and hopefully when we come back for this same program some other time, probably in another country, uh, you will also be there. Yeah, last year I hosted two groups like this, so I was wondering when you uh, sent me the invitation, I said, is it one of the groups that came last year? I had two women groups like last year that came here to host uh, an event like this, yes. you know? But I advise the organizer, next time he should involve the mission in organization, and we'll get you what you want. Mm. We'll get you what you want. So all thank right. you for coming, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, I'll Ambassador, like to thank add you. to what uh, the ambassador said, I would like to add to what the ambassador said. I want my dear sister to understand, as we all know, that the political environment is a male-dominated sphere. From where I come from and in most parts of Africa. But that's the reason why we are here. We are trying to see how we can make a difference. We have identified that it is a problem we already know that there are a lot of factors that hinder women from being accepted in that sphere. And of course, it will never be easy at any time, but we need to be deliberate. And this calls for a deliberate action for us to reach our goal we have come to realize our place in the society. We have acknowledged and the world has acknowledged that women have the potential 
to be leaders, those that have been given the opportunity to serve in various leadership positions have also done well. Right. And so we are using that to justify why we need to be more involved in leadership roles. Okay. So we have issues, we have problems, we have challenges, but we must prepare ourselves to meet such opportunities. All right. Dr. Kamara, can you just use less than 10 minutes so we can round up this, this segment of the panel session uh, to advise uh, the young women who may be considering, but with fear, they are pulling back. Thank you very much. Um, to the young women, I'll say, as my elders here have spoken, you need to persevere. You need to be focused. You need to know what you want, and you shouldn't be distracted. They send some of these men deliberately to distract you. And when I say they send them, I'm not speaking, just speaking on the sexual aspect of it. I'm even talking about distraction for you not to achieve your goal, for you not to achieve what you think is good. And I always say, no matter where you find yourself, make sure you bring the needed change. Make sure you bring that change within your society. When I went to the National Revenue Authority, they had one of the worst maternity leave policy. Who formulated those policies? The men. And why should I be discriminated against because of the way God made my own body? My own body bears children. And why bearing that child at some point I leave the office to go bring that child into the world? And when I'm out of the office, the question is, are they, are they having my back? The place that I occupy, is it there waiting for me for after my maternity leave? There are lots of things that happen. So under my leadership, I made sure that one of the things we looked at and we had to formulate better ones is the maternity leave. We looked after the ladies. And every job advert that goes out underneath, it says women are highly encouraged to apply. Thank we you. make sure that we do that and we definitely encourage the women. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen here. I would like to say thank you to Dr. And Mrs. Tuma Adama Agento Kamara, who is the chairperson of the Board of, uh, Board of Director, National Revenue Authority in Sierra Leone. Thank you. And thank you to the wife of the Benue State Governor, Her Excellency Dr. Eunice Autumn Samuel, Thank you, too, to the ambassador. Thank you so much. So let's just quickly uh, take this short break while we have a photo se section with them, and then we'll go to other part, other aspect of the program. Please, can you just give us light, light music, please? Okay.